Well, it's raining, and this is the day I'm going to take the Polestar back and pick up my Tesla from the Tesla Collision Center. And what do you know? There's a software update, but I am not going to be able to install it in no time because look at the requirements. If you want to see how software update, update works with the Polestar, i got a video on that. Just search up the channel. All right, it's going to be a long drive, as you can see. So during this drive, we will tell you about our long-term review of this car and our overall opinion. One thing I want to point out with this Polestar 2 that I've had an issue with, as long as I've been test driving it for a few thousand miles, is the slow into reverse camera. Like, if I just put it in reverse and when I get going, well, actually, it did it there. No, nope, no. Nope. See how it hesitates? I don't know. It's slow. It's too slow in the reverse. I just wanted to say that. So when all is said and done, we're going to have about... Denise, you look very upset, you very concerned. Like rear end the car ahead of us. <laughs> we will have put a long-term test of about 2,000 miles on this car. And so we're going to give you some opinions on the 2,000 miles that we've put on this car right now. All right, so let me give you some of my thoughts here on the 2,000 mile, month and a half, long-term review test of the Polestar 2. You can see it, it's, it's driving pretty well. We actually went through some steep, deep puddles actually because of this rain, it's fine. But overall, it's a great regular car. It's just a regular car in my mind that happens to be electric. And that's a good thing if you just like regular cars, but it's a bad thing if you like all the advantages you can get with the extra technology that is in basically every Tesla. And we have a Tesla and it just makes everything so much better from just regular driving, I, I could be, have my hands off the wheel now, but I can't because there's no that self-driving technology here. The long distance trips are so much better, you know, um, and it's just actually, you know, I say an overall better car, the Tesla 2, slightly. I think that every Tesla is because they're built on pure electric platforms. Denise, do you have anything to add? It's a nice car, but like you said, it's just a, a regular car. There, there are no advantages to it. I think it took longer to charge than your Tesla did. Um, Actually, it's not. It's about the same. Faster, uh, there, about the charging is about the same, but the problem is there's not as many stations to charge at, so we're more limited. You're right. That's another mm -hmm. reason why long distance trips are not as nice. I don't like the regenerative braking on this car. It, it oh. stops really suddenly. But it stops, it stops without the brake. Okay, I gotta just stop yeah. right now without well, the brake. It's nice to drive with just one foot and, and you know, one pedal driving, but I'm, I'm tired of it stopping abruptly. And that's right, not smooth. It could be soft. Maybe that's what the software update is that they have now. We'll fix that. Who knows? I think it's, or maybe it's a design because it's in, uh, not a pure EV platform. They'll never be able to get it as smooth as a Tesla. Uh, yeah. Once I was trying to put my seatbelt on and Mike was trying to give me a hard time and he turned the wheel and stopped so abruptly that I hit my head on the rear view mirror. Oh, here. That, that, that was not good. No, not <laughs> good at all. Not fun. And I'm looking forward to going back to full self-driving or at least uh, auto steer so that Autopilot. Mike can keep focused <laughs> and not drive into other people's lanes like he <laughs> often does when he's making videos while driving. Yeah, right now, autopilot would be really nice to have. Look at that puddle of water over there. And even though you're not supposed to use it in construction sites, look at all those cars just blasting through it. Oh, we got it here too. This is part of the problem. Look at this. We're going to get to test out deep, muddy water here with the Polestar 2. Too bad it's look at that. in the left lane, not your lane. Too bad? I don't want to ruin this car. I got to pay for it. Look at that. Oh, hello. Oh, muddy batteries. Whoa, look out. It's doing well in this heavy water stuff. I haven't had any issues driving this car, which is nice. Actually, in any circumstance, it drives very well. It's very well balanced, very surprisingly balanced. Oh, look at all that water. If you see my video on where I raced some Japanese super bikes, I found out that, you know, even though I have the front wheel drive version, it really didn't do, it didn't understeer at all, which you would expect from front wheel drive. It was very neutral and balanced. 
maybe that jerkiness is just a thing with the front wheel drive that I don't know because I don't have an all wheel drive, but that's what I call jerkiness. Is there a spot for us? I think one of them. One, one. I don't know if the cord's gonna reach. It'd be cool if it does. Yeah, this is so much longer than Tesla. If this is a Tesla, I could never do this. This is gonna work. Okay, so we're gonna let this thing charge all the way up. We're gonna need all the distance, I think, to get back to where we have to go after picking up the Tesla. So we will be here for about an hour and 30 minutes, it seems like, to charge it all the way up from where it is, according to its own clock. Actually, I miscalculated. We only need 65% battery. I just did the calculation, so we are actually on the way out now. That didn't take long at all. All right, we're in Rockville, almost to the Tesla Collision Center. Yeah, there's the car. We've never seen it this clean before, we just said. We may never see it that clean again. Very tight in here with the cars. All right, we've never seen the car this clean before, and it's probably gonna get messed up because, well, probably when it was new, but the niece never saw it when it was new. It's gonna rain again, and here's what they did. They had to remove the, the PPF, paint protection film from the front bumper, and they had to repaint some. So that's gotta go on, new film, new film on here, new panel here, new door, and new Falcon wing door. And everything sounds and looks great, just like new. And they had to repaint part of this panel too. The whole side was redone basically. And it looks the same as the rest of the paint. It's a flat black. So. Door sounds great too when it closes and opens. Yeah, so I was just driving this car and it's so amazing how big the front of the car is. It's so much bigger on the inside. You'll see when you get inside again, <laughs> but compared to what I've been driving, so much bigger. All right, you can see, we can see while I'm packing this thing up, how much room is in here. This whole storage compartment's full underneath. I got so much stuff in here too, and still plenty of room. But now this car actually looks like it's got some space. But when I was in here, it looked like it had no space at all. With my stuff and you know, car camping was like not even really possible in this car. All right, I think we got everything out of the car, I think, which took quite a while.
All right, 122 miles and 140, so we are done charging this car. And with electric car, it's not the same as gas. You can return it on empty. Enterprise rent a car may you be can. closed by the you time you You can do it 24 hours a day, so different than a gas car. Way different than renting a gas car when you're dropping it off. I don't think this is correct, and we're going to have Denise watch this change over time. And I'll slow down if I need to, but I do not believe that's correct. This is very accurate. This is 122 versus 140. Usually it's actually very conservative. So I'm guessing there's more like 145, 150 left in the car uh, rather than the other way around. That will probably recalculate as we drive. I gotta reboot this computer, it's acting up. I'm almost certain they gave me like an entirely new door. This does not even sound like my old door. This is like the newer Model X's that I've heard. It's the way it opens and the way it closes. The motor. I don't know about the window regulator, but the motor that opens and closes the door is new. It does not sound like the other one. All right, we're ready to go. Down to Glen Allen to return the car. Goodbye, Tesla. That's so weird approaching and hitting a stop and having to press the brakes now. Now I've really gotten used to that on the Polestar and I wish I had it on my car. But that's one of the few things, very, very few. This windshield is huge. There's so much space in this car, it's crazy. So much more space than the Polestar. But you know, we knew it's a smaller car. It's just unbelievably smaller. For my needs and yes the accelerator is so much more sensitive here so much more power immediately off the line there it is again i expect the car to stop i gotta push the pedal that's weird yeah again the windshield is just ginormous i have it tinted but you can see this massive windshield also remember i'm comparing this to a car with 210,000 miles on it, which basically drives almost like new. Another impression I'm seeing here is that the software is also so much more intuitive, clearer, easy to use, faster even, the processors. I got, you know, I got the MCU2 upgrade, so of course anything's faster than MCU1, but this is also an older processor than the Polestar is older of a model car, if you think about it. I tell you, I'm really feeling the difference of all-wheel drive as well through the corners, especially in the wet here. Just a lot more confident overall. Yeah, big difference in the confidence level. I highly recommend all-wheel drive vehicles. Wow. Especially in this wet. It's just, when you, you feel that power being transmitted to the wheels, you feel it to all the wheels. Not just the front, like on that Polestar, which is front-wheel drive. Oh, and let me say, so much smoother on and off the accelerator, so much than that uh, Polestar jerkiness. Really, so much better. I cannot even tell you. It's like night and day. And that is the biggest flaw of the Polestar, the jerkiness. I have a video on that. I don't know if they can fix it with software. Or maybe it's because it's a hybrid platform that also has uh, ICE engines. It is so much less fatiguing to drive here in traffic. I'm telling you, so much less fatiguing. I didn't even realize it until autopilot was gone for a while. Glad it's back. I'll also say that with, even from this old Tesla, it doesn't make the weird, it keeps some kind of weird and strange sounding noises from the Polestar 2 on both acceleration and deceleration. This doesn't make it. It's always, it makes some so, so, some noises from the motors, but they're much quieter and they are not strange sounding. They're actually pleasant sounding as compared with the Polestar 2.
I also do prefer the ride of the air suspension. You know we got the 22s on this one. Still a smoother ride with the, with the air suspension versus the old uh, coil springs on the Polestar 2. Okay, so we're dropping off the Polestar and they have a spot here with electric charger. So we're just gonna plug it in for them. If Denise can get it backed up. She thought that was a charger, but it's a vacuum. Wait till you hear the re reverse. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. The reason why Denise is kind of angled, see here, is because the camera is off. It's not centered on the license plate. As I've noted that during our trip, it's really annoying, if you ask me. It's just off to the side on one side of the license plate. I'll show you. It's there, it's on the right. And because of that, everything's off when you back up. It needs to be in the center. I don't know who designed that. So you can see it said we were supposed to have negative five and we have plenty of range left. Okay, well, what did you think about that car after driving the Lexus recently again, now having been back driving that Polestar and having been in this car? This car feels huge, doesn't it? Yeah, it's more, much more comfortable. I, I did adjust the steering to, to light instead of moderate or heavy, yeah. <laughs> so I could steer it a little easier. It wasn't giving me so much wrist pain this time. But any other thoughts that you're now we have it we have it for two thousand miles about six weeks, no, long term test. No, it's still pretty easy to drive. I I wish it was more honest about the range consumption. I didn't need a warning that I, I wanted to stop for a charger, and I had plenty of range. It was giving you warnings like that. Yeah. It, Up it, to the very end. It said well, no. It it gave me one midway, and it says you you'll arrive with negative one percent battery <laughs> and it wasn't true i arrived with what 40 miles left yeah <laughs> i didn't want the warning
I can back up and make it straight every time. You'd never go in the wrong angle because the camera's center mount. This is supercharged number 2,313. Uh-oh. On the original battery pack. Okay, we're not sure, but we think they may have replaced both power motors in the doors. I gotta investigate it more, but they weren't supposed to do anything with the drivers or the passenger side at all. But maybe they had to do it to make it equal, but I gotta, I gotta review some old videos. The sounds, this sound is definitely different and new, like the newer versions of it. And that I'm not sure about, but sim I think it might be also. What do you think?